What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. Rookie reports. Um, we're going to do some more deep, like I said, deep diving into all the rookies, probably re-rank them a little bit here in, you know, week four or five, just at, at like quarterly-ish and get a little more into them. But we, you know, we talked about a couple last week, the big ones. So we're going to talk, you know, a couple more this week, some big, bigger ones and some medium sized ones and some smaller ones. We'll run through these real quick. You know, CD Lamb out there, he was our number one receiver as, as most people did. We had him going, you know, right after all of those top five running backs uh, went off the board. Uh, he was our six consensus six pick time and time again. I didn't end up with very much CD Lamb. I got one um, share. I got one share. We thought, you know, maybe you know might not step right in and be great because there's so much going on. But I mean, right now it's you know six targets week one, five catches, fifty nine yards last last week, nine targets, uh, six catches, one hundred and six yards, um, and it was just. It was fantastic, and, and he he looks just like he looked. And just like he looked in college. I'm not sure it'll stay this week, every week, and, and, you know, Dalton Schultz is out there getting 10 targets this week and catching nine for 88 and a touchdown, and it seems like Michael Gallup is the odd man out, which is, is a little weird, which is kind of the reason why you were a little hesitant on CD. You thought, hey, maybe Amari Cooper might need to – you know, end up not doing his whole contract and end up getting out of there in a year or two, and then maybe it's CD and Gallup. But I mean, it's probably going to go back and forth. But as of now, CD just looks like plug him, plug him, and play him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they were down twenty something points earlier, sure. though. As sure. far as you know, Schultz getting ten targets, and it's everybody get. I mean, obviously they yeah. need to. They need to throw the ball to C.D. Lamb, um, but with with that kind of lead that the Falcons had on them right away, um, you just that. You all, all you always, you're always going to see inflated targets. Yeah, that, that's good. Good, point. Uh, and especially when you got a team, when you got that big a lead, the defense is just back up a little bit because you're like, all right, well, let's take away the home run play, make them earn it down the field, and get and and make them run a little bit of time off the clock. And of course, at the end of the game, and you know, Dallas came back and ended up winning it anyway in a crazy, awesome fashion. But it was, you know, when you have that big of a lead early. The other team, if they have a competent system, which obviously Cowboys are have you know much above average offense, you know they're going to make plays. And the Dalton Schultzes of the world catch a you know nine for a hundred or whatever it was, nine for eighty, yeah. because the defense is backing up, just trying not to give up the big play and chew, chew the clock. Make maybe the offense will make a mistake. Yeah. Well, I get that there was more targets probably in this game because of how big they got down, but he still had six targets and five catches week one, which, I mean, this is just a, a rookie wide receiver with no offseason, right? Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. and then he hasn't even hit a big home run really yet. Like, he's, 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 he's on the verge of bursting one off, but, I mean, he definitely looks like the real deal. He, he looks like one of the more dangerous slot receivers in the league already. Oh, yeah, it right, doesn't look like sure. you mess. Doesn't look like you messed that pick up. We're always just don't mess the first top X amount of picks up, and then this is looks like you right. fucking yeah. At and, the very least, hit a double, right? You know? And what he's doing with these targets, like he's he's finding soft spots deep in zones. He's he's going up and making contested grabs. Like they're they're manufacturing touches for him too. There's like end arounds. There's short screens. There's bubble screens. There's like all this stuff they're doing with him now. He is only really playing in you know three wide receiver sets. Um, so when, when there's, when it's two, you know, it's still Gallup out there and Gallup's still a stud, but damn, yeah, but it's CD not working Lamb. out for Gallup right now. Yeah. But I, yeah, I'm you gotta, to, I'm scared to play Michael Gallup right now. I feel like unless you got another option, I, I you know, I, I'm, he's out of the lineup for now. It'll be interesting to see when we revisit this week four or five to see where kind of everything's maybe evened out and balanced out a little bit, or maybe just CD's just been off and running and that's the mismatch that they like. And, you know, good luck covering all those dudes. Um, but CD looks really good. Um, that's the bottom love, line here, regardless of how much you're trying to start him or whatever. Right. He just looks phenomenal. He looks everything we thought he was. He looks like it in two weeks already. Yeah, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm a little worried about my Gallup stock. Right, Not dynasty 
you know, long term wise, I know Gallup is a good player and I'll take talent and just, you know, have to wait it out. And there's, you know, it's not like Amari Cooper's been injury free and, you know, we're already down a tight end. And Dal- Dalton Schultz, I don't know if that guy's going to be involved in every game playing like Pick he was him up. just involved. Um, probably Pick not. Him up. Like you said, they were kind of maybe in that prevent and, hey, get everybody out of here and we're just going to keep checking down to Dalton Schultz. Not going to lie, I didn't see every play of that game. So I don't, I can't tell the exact story of what happened there. Um, I do know that the onside kick happened. That's <laughs> oh, that was so bad. That was so bad. <laughs> so I don't have to hear I about that anymore. Dolls, that kick happened. Ooh, one more thing right. I saw CD get away, do that he did in college was get away with the cheat. He was pushing off and he was not getting called for it. This is what he did in college. I was like, I cheats a little bit, but he like, you got to cheat. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. He's already Can't showing that too. On. Can't throw a flag on 88 for the Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> flag proof. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to LaVisca Chenault. Uh, definitely, you know, wasn't quite as high end. A me- little bit more of a medium end asset, I would say, as, as far as rookie drafts were concerned. Um, was ending up in the middle-ish of the second round, which is kind of where we all kind of consensus had him. Obviously, when we did our rookie stuff, like we were saying, you know, him or Antonio Gibson, we all were kind of like, yeah, I'm going to take the running back for the most part. Um, obviously, Antonio Gibson ended up way further up the line than that. Um, but he was about a mid second rounder. We were all on him. Kudos to anybody who was saying, Hey, you know, this guy needs to be up a little higher still as things play. We haven't seen Mims. I still like, all, you know, Pittman and Mims and we haven't seen much Ayuk and all those guys we had in front of them. So I'm not necessarily saying, Hey, I'm ready to just throw LaVisca up there. But I would say that we, we kind of figured out that he was behind them and, and just kind of were like, yeah, we like LaVisca, but we don't love LaVisca. Like some people were outwardly saying, but I mean, it hasn't been super crazy out there, but I mean, he just looks like a brick shit house and it can do a lot of things. And I went from not wanting anything to do with this offense to kind of wanting a piece of this offense. And to me, this is classic coordinator face, John, uh, Jay Gruden over there. Just that offense looks, it's fun to watch. And Minshew is, you know, I've, I've been hard on Minshew saying, Hey, get, you know, get rid of Minshew in your super flex leagues, um, and get what you can. But you know, I, I don't know if it'll last forever, but it's fun. It's a hell of a ride. It's really fun. This offense is kind of fun to watch. Uh, Boys are definitely having fun. So, you know, I definitely would, would, and would be trying to make Visca hasn't blown up. They have handed it to him a couple times a game and he's had, you know, three catches each game. Uh, So he hasn't necessarily blown up. So probably still relatively obtainable. Obtainable. And I'm, I'm pretty interested. Hell yeah. I mean, he just – he looks like a huge dude out there. He's like the biggest guy on the field. He looks like a running back. And then sometimes they hand it to him out of the backfield like a dang running back. Um, yeah. And he's, you know, he's making plays all over the field. He's going up and snatching balls out of the air. He's digging them out of the ground. He looks fast. They're getting – they're giving him handoffs. He's running over people. Like, I think he's shown yeah. you – regardless of the production, he's shown you that he belongs on a freaking NFL field. And – I mean, I, I think I'm, I think I brought it up like one time on a phone call with you, Casey, like as the season and as the off season came to a close, I was like, man, I feel like I kind of missed out on not getting any Chenault. Like yeah. you could kind of feel it building up. And then, I mean, just as a perfect storm there with, with them bringing him in and what they're doing on offense and, and they got pieces now and Eifert's making a <laughs> playback from the grave and Minshew's just yeah, man, freaking – Taking shots at Ryan Fitzpatrick because of his beard, like just having a good time, just just there's, living there's it up. Targets, targets everywhere. They're spreading it around. I mean, Keelan Cole's back from the dead. Keelan Cole out there doing work. Uh, Charks, yeah. you know, a little slightly down from what people expectations were, uh, but Keelan Cole out there. He's they're they're you know they're supporting more than just DJ Chark. Right, and, and I mean, when they let go of Lenny, that was kind of like the nail in the coffin. The Jags are tanking. Right. And, uh, of course, they're not playing like it. And you, Gardner you know, certainly it, didn't get the memo. They didn't get the, – the whole team didn't get the memo. That, yeah. You know, beating the Colts was like they have an eight-point underdog to the Colts week one. And then the Titans are a team that is going to beat you up. And the Titans got out to a lead, and the Jags fought back. And Well, they were just, driving there at the end, and it was – he, he uh, Simmons on the D-line made a great play, got his arm up. Uh, on a Minshew ball when Minshew was trying to drive down popped and get a field goal or a score, popped it up and picked it off. Got that pick, um, yeah. And so that was a bummer. But, yeah, man, they, were, they, were, they fought their ass off in that game, and there was no quit, and they, you know, made some good plays, and Gardner made some great plays, some fourth down pickups, scrambling around. Like, 
I'm impressed. I'm impressed. That's a good word for the Jags. They're, they've been impressive for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, John, we're going to go with some Josh Kelly here. Almost went John Kelly, not to be confused. <laughs> like, uh, whoa. <laughs> Joshua <laughs> Kelly here. Um, at most drafts, he was kind of a late second, uh, early to mid third kind of guy, depending on, you know, a lot of people were kind of off this guy. He was a, he was a Jag running back and, oh, he may he's be, a jag. which I can't stand that term. Um, but he was certainly a favorite target of ours when we did, you know, third round, you know, or the guys, you know, after the big group of people like Chenault ended, he was always the next guy on the list of, you know, I want, we want to take a shot at Joshua Kelly for the reason of, Hey, the chargers, I don't think it's just going to be all Eckler. Like maybe it'll be Justin Jackson, but I kind of ran that experiment last year and it didn't work. Um, so then they bring in Kelly and I liked what Kelly had on tape. It wasn't anything super duper flashy, but he had, you know, decent speed and he could, you know, kind of make maybe one guy miss. wasn't the most elusive guy, but he was he just fit. With the, once the Chargers got him, it was like, oh, they don't they need a guy like they don't have a guy like this. This is perfect, and he's come in and done nothing. But uh, I, I ended up with a lot of Josh Kelly. I think we all did. Um, and twelve carries week one for sixty yards and a TD. And last week, obviously the yards per carry weren't very good, but twenty two carries uh, is is more or less what I was looking at. Sixty four yards, three targets, two catches, forty nine yards. Um, so this is a guy who uh, is having a nice rookie report card. He's getting – he's got a B-plus on that thing for sure, uh, you know. Well, with, compared to where you got him, it's a damn A. All right. Because now you can dang – you can if you're struggling for an RB2, like I got some leagues where I'm struggling for an RB2, let me fire up Josh Kelly. I'll sure. put him in there. Like, he, 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 the volume was ridiculous last week. I, I don't care about the yards per carry. Whatever. Herbert's, Herbert's going to get another start here, and they're pro- you know maybe they are trying to be a little more conservative again. Uh, Eckler was really good in the splits in this game, um, so I, you know I think Eckler he's not obviously not just taking the role away from Eckler. No, but there's, see, no, but there's I mean, rooms, he, there's enough room for them to come. He is catching the ball well, like he's showing good hands yeah. and producing, and he looks pretty fast, and he's making good decisions and. He's looking like a huge steal where you got him at the end of a second or early third, maybe rookie draft. Like he was falling in all the drafts we were in, getting mad disrespected. And we were excited yeah. to have him fall to us. And uh, it's great. Like it just the, hey, he's a running back that we all kind of liked. Scoop him up. Scoop him up. <laughs> Big Co, any closing thoughts on Josh Kelly? No, you're right. I mean, the volume's been there for somebody that you've gotten in the third round of your rookie drafts. I mean, what else can you ask? Right. You know, I mean, any time I mean, we talk about this in rookie draft season and from time to time, you've got, what, a 5% chance that you somebody you take in the third round of your rookie draft being on your team in a year or two because they, you, you're going to rotate them out. And, I mean, Josh Kelly's out there balling out. I mean, you got to be super excited about your Josh Kelly. Yeah. Like Jay Wayne said, if, you, if you're in a rough enough spot and he's got to be your RB2, you could do worse. Certainly, certainly could do worse. And you got it. You know, you had Tyrod, which you might lose a little mobility, but Herbert has got, you know, some DL legs there that are, uh, that are pretty strong. So you still got the presence of a running quarterback, which is always good for the running backs. Yeah. And um, he brings that youth, youth excitement. You know, he's, sure. he's, he's, he's green as he can be, but he's, he's big, he's fast, he's excited to be on the field. He didn't think he was going to be playing this early, I guarantee it. And, you know, you got – he's out there running around and um, that, that's going to open him. He's got a big arm, so – Made not, some really good throws. You know, like it's going to open it, won open, that up, game. open up things a little bit. Tyrod has been a lot, you know, more conservative and not turned the ball over, which not that, you know, the rookie did either, but just saying brings that excitement level and, um, you know, he brings a, a little bit more uh, just spunk to the – quarterback position not that Tyrod doesn't bring it but he's a little yeah. older now you know Tyrod he's not young anymore sure. and uh, that the NFL will, will age you quick anyway so uh, it's kind of cool to see see the rookie in there playing earlier than we thought he would be playing yeah and maybe you see a drop off on the week on the next Tyrod. week where he gets the start and goes through all the motions sometimes we see that uh, with players but exciting either way uh, for the rookie QB there and in, in 
sit well la i guess yeah herbert all right last guy on the list we worked from expensive uh rookies to the cheapest uh darnell mooney uh you, money, maybe man. you drafted him if you had a if you had a really deep draft class i'm not gonna pretend like i know very much about this guy except he was hanging around late and was just intriguing because you never you don't know who the bears third guy is here bears traded up for him in the fifth round with the eagles he's out of Tulane. he reportedly had a round of four three eight forty so pretty fast guy. He's had three for 30 uh, in every game, uh, and then had a touchdown this last week. He's been in there on about 38% uh, snap share, which you would assume would increase, you know, a little bit. Um, but just thought this was a decent name to throw out there for some deeper leagues. And, you know, he's not out there in, uh, you know, many of our deeper leagues, um, but he certainly could be floating around out there uh, in some leagues. Not for redraft, but dynasty purposes. Yeah, for whatever reason, that Bears game was was one of the local games that I had to watch, which was kind of a bummer. But, um, like, he kept going to Anthony Miller. Trubisky kept going to Anthony Miller, and he dropped, like, every single ball. He didn't catch any of them. He dropped a touchdown. He dropped, like, a first down. But then he started going to Mooney, and that man was catching it, and it was, like, in big spots. And, and it, when I went to look at the box score, it certainly felt like it was more than three catches. And so for any rookie to come out and be scoring points like this – it's, that that was come, kind of coming out of nowhere. You got to take note and try and try and scoop them up if you can. Yeah, that's why you're on the list. <laughs> you made a list. <laughs>